theory, if I'm blowing the fuse, then that means that this wire is grounding out. So we should have continuity from this wire, which is actually a hot wire, to ground. We don't at the moment, which means something is being super finicky. But I'll bet if we start this, we'll find that there's actually something rubbing. Well, let's try one more time here. Nothing. This should be a ground, so we should have continuity there. Yep. Yep, good connection there. So that's ground, and this one should not be grounding out. Mm -hmm. We are dealing with an electrical gremlin on the backhoe. Yesterday, I dove into the backhoe to try to solve what we thought was the problem, and I'm still convinced that it was the original problem. This little weather pack harness here, this little pin was pushed back in the harness, and so it was not making a good connection on this pair. And the result was that this button right here, which allows you to push the button to disconnect the drivetrain. So if you have it in drive, and you wanna disconnect the drivetrain so that you can use the RPMs of the engine to raise and lower the bucket, you can just push the button. Otherwise, you'd have to take it out of gear, raise and lower the bucket, put it back in gear, take it out of gear, and so on. So this button is a, a kind of a shortcut. And I think it probably reduces wear and tear right here too. It's much, much safer to do. Well, the problem is it wasn't working and so the backhoe would not move. And so we ended up replacing this weather pack. Well, when we did that, long story short, something changed. And yesterday I blew enough fuses to fill my hand trying to diagnose this gremlin. Basically what's happening is when we push the button, it's blowing the fuse, which tells us that there's a short somewhere in that electrical system. I did a lot of isolating yesterday and pulling different harnesses and isolating switches and whatnot. And I was able to narrow it down to one fairly small section of wire. Of course, like everything, it's very hard to access, but this little white and blue wire actually comes from this switch. So when we push this switch, voltage comes through the switch, it comes out this wire, and it actuates the clutch solenoid, which is ultimately what disengages the drivetrain so you can use the RPM. Well, somewhere between here, this little harness, and there's a harness up front and there's one in the rear. Somewhere between here and there, this wire is shorting out to something. It could be shorting out to this wire or it could be touching the frame because the wire is actually chafing. All of you mechanically inclined people already know this, but for those who don't know, this kind of braided material is actually an anti-abrasion protectant for the wires because of all the vibration that they go through. But guess what? It's not perfect. And sometimes it still chafes. And it can chafe in the weirdest places where you get rubs. Of course, on airplanes, this is particularly noticeable because of the amount of vibration. And so you'll get a wire that will actually wear right through the sheath and it could be touching a piece of metal like this and just bouncing <laughs> something like that as you're driving or flying and it will short out the fuse and blow the fuse. So what I'm trying to do today without doing a tremendous amount of tear down on this backhoe is to find this issue, get it diagnosed if we can. If we can't, I'm probably gonna do the thing that I don't wanna do and that is kind of circumvent that portion of the loom because that wire disappears into three different looms of varying sizes starting out about this big and becoming this large and I just don't wanna take those apart because I feel like if I do, I might be opening a rat's nest. So that's the goal. We need to get this clutch cutout switch working. We got the backhoe to move obviously, which was the first problem, but somehow in the process of doing that, we've created this new issue.
Let's see, this was made in 1991, it's 2019, so that's probably about 28 years worth of dirt that's accumulated under the instrument cluster. So I finally found it. I guess to me, that's always rule number one of working on cars and trucks. You have to find what you're gonna work on before you can work on it. What a mess. I've <laughs> Years of hydraulic fluid and dirt and, well, yellow jacket nest too. So as I've been cleaning, obviously we found the loom that this wire is uh, in and it joins this monster loom down here and then it actually makes its way up front to a connector and then ultimately it goes up to this uh, loader arm switch. Somewhere in that big loom it goes backwards and finds its way to the shifter switch. As I was cleaning and, and kind of finding all these wires and digging, I'm looking for anything that looks like it could be like rubbed or impacted by rain or moisture or something. And I really can't find anything. There's only one spot that I found that even remotely looked like it could be a potential issue, but I really can't see in there. It's like in a really bad spot. This loom is right here and you can actually see it coming up out of the subframe into the instrument cluster. And that wire is actually in that loom. And there's no way I can even show you guys this, but somewhere super deep back in there, that wire actually is sitting right on the subframe rail. And it looks like it could be up against it, but man, it's so deep back in there and I can't see it through here. I can't see it through here. I can't see it through the top, but it does look to me like it could be rubbing and it does look to me like it actually could be the white wire with a blue stripe that's rubbing. <laughs> if I could just see it, maybe, I don't know, might have to lift this up and take this rear tire off to be able to see in there close enough to diagnose this. I sure hope we don't have to do that. I was hoping that I could just take this kind of whole plastic console thing off, but as usual, there's knobs and things that are all kind of intertwined. It's a bit of a, a jungle and a puzzle in there. And I'm not sure I want to tear all that apart just to get down in there. Um, man, it's, I, it's so close to being able to see it right there. Maybe if I get some help, I can see it. I did do a continuity check a couple of times just to see if maybe me cleaning and you know removing all this debris uh, either made it worse or better. And there's no continuity right now at that, that wire, which this morning before I started filming there was. And that's what's blowing this fuse. So somewhere there's an issue, but moving the backhoe over here so I could get it closer to the compressed air, it solved itself. I guess that makes me feel good because at least it's intermittent and that means that it's not something that's that's physically like permanently wrong it's more like something's kind of touching in the knot and I don't know I guess I kind of feel like that's easier to diagnose because you're looking for something that looks like it could move and rub we may have uh, we may have found it on this this loom I just need to get a hand getting down in there. You can kind of see where they put a piece of, of rubber around this opening in the floorboard to help prevent chafing and rubbing. But down there on that subframe, there's nothing there. And the loom appears to be just sitting right up against that frame rail. It seems so innocent, but that's all it takes to create this ridiculously annoying problem. Well, I was able to get this console kind of in a position where I can see down in there and <laughs> I just can't tell. It sure looks like the loom on the outside's a little bit frayed right there, but not, not a ton. And I can't get any continuity from this uh, white wire to ground all of a sudden. It's like everything decided to start working, so maybe cleaning it. I didn't solve the problem, but maybe I temporarily fixed whatever was wrong until it shows up later. Okay, so we definitely have continuity from that wire to that wire, or that wire to ground, so that wire is grounded. So let's just see. I wish there was an easier way to do this stuff without having to have an army of people. Thought I'd just see if I could rub this on the frame rail and get it to act up but it doesn't appear to be so I have a hunch that that issue on the frame rail is not 
that little bit of chafing is not not a problem otherwise I'd probably be able just to push it push it into the frame rail and get it to, to short out and I'm not getting anything <sighs> well I can't seem to get this problem to duplicate now which is super weird just moving the backhoe over here I don't think solved the problem but I wonder if maybe all the compressed air just getting rid of all this dirt and moisture and and everything maybe it's not solved so why don't we let's just put a fuse in here let's see if it works and if it blows the fuse but we're not getting continuity at that wire boy oh boy we're gonna start at square one but let's just let's just try this and see what happens boy oh boy we went through a lot of fuses yesterday Yep. All right, so this is the fuse that's been blowing when we push this button or this button. And I can't seem to find continuity, so let's push the button and see what happens. Should be able to put it in gear. Let's see here. Okay, so we know reverse works. So let's just do a test here. So if we hold this down, I don't know, I can't seem to duplicate it, so I don't know what to do other than just to put it all back together and I guess if it happens again, start this process over? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, did that blow it? Yeah, I think that blew it. So it was working, but then I used the one on the shifter and I think we blew the fuse. Nope. Oh, you know what? I know what's going on. I didn't plug that switch in. Ha! Had myself totally, totally psyched out. So that switch isn't even plugged in. Let's plug that back in and we'll just see if that switch is working because I isolated it yesterday, but it's possible the issue is in that switch. All right, that's plugged in now. It's working. <laughs> There's a reason we call these ghosts, right? It doesn't look to me like that loom, from what I can see, is chafing. I mean, it's maybe just a couple of frays on the outer sheath, but it doesn't look to me like the thing is rubbed through. I don't think. I was able to, I was wiggling and yanking on that loom trying to get it to short out and no luck. I cannot duplicate the continuity at the harness ever since I moved the backhoe over here. Boy, I guess I'm at a point where it's just put it back together and if it happens again, figure it out, I guess. All right, if you want to maybe give me a hand and just push that button when I tell you to, okay. I just want to check for voltage here. You ready? Yeah, go ahead and press and hold it. Okay, that one's good. And let's check the shifter one. Yep, it's good. Man, that's just so frustrating. Like, how can something just like self fix? Did it not work when I was inside, real quick? Uh, no. It worked. Everything's been working since I moved the backhoe over here this morning. Like, I think the stuff's just trying to send me to the mental hospital. You know what Brian said? He said, "Call me later after you pulled all your hair out." Right. Well, you still have a lot of hair left. I so. do. But he knows. He knows the gremlins. You know what I think happened? I'm just. When I was talking to Brian this morning, I was thinking we yanking on the harness caused this. But you know what I'm thinking? It was the rain. I think the rain two days ago got in something, like one of these switches. And then it dried up. Something really freaking weird. And then it just dried out. And everything's fine again. So I would think as a rule of thumb, if you're having issues with your equipment in the rain, like give it a week and see if it's still there. Yeah. Procrastination. Sometimes. All right, thanks for the help. You're welcome. Well, it looks like it's about to rain, so I think it's time to just put this away, put everything back together. Whenever this thing manifests itself again, I guess we'll start to deal with it. At least we 
kind of think we know where to start. And I guess if there's a positive that comes out of today, cleaning up behind this electronics cluster is never bad. Dirt creates corrosion and dirt creates moisture issues. And so if anything, we've kind of, you know, corrected that or remedied that situation. And I can say that this is looking a lot better down here too. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to take the pressure washer to this, but boy, that's that kind of scares me. <laughs> Because if you have an electrical gr gremlin and you start hitting it with water, boy, you can really open a can of worms there. So I guess before it rains, we'll get this thing put back together. We'll go back about our life and that'll be that. You know, I've been thinking about this video and I guess it was on my mind to just delete it, you know, to throw it in the garbage can. And I guess if you're watching this video, we decided that it was worth sharing. I think what was going through my mind is that nothing, nothing happened today. I feel like I've wasted your guys' time. You know, we try to create good videos that are fun and educational and interesting. And I feel like, well, nothing really happened today. We tore the backhoe apart. We did a bunch of troubleshooting. We never really found the problem. We put it back together and it works. And I guess there's not really some profound lesson there, but I was thinking maybe there is. The lesson to me, and I guess I'm speaking more to the younger people out there because I see this as a symptom of our generation. And that is that people in general don't understand how things are built and they certainly do not understand how to maintain them. It seems like when something starts to give people problems, they just throw it away and buy a new one. And I feel like that's a huge opportunity for, for our generation to step up and learn how to maintain stuff. I think years in the service industry has taught me, I don't know that I was this way when I was really young because we're all impatient people. We just wanna go, go, go. Uh, but years in the service industry taught me the value of having your equipment operable when you need it. Uh, I feel like just too many people I've known, competitors in the past, and just friends and acquaintances through the years, uh, they don't maintain their stuff. And so when they need to do a project, they go to use a tool and it doesn't work. And so they end up spending most, if not all of the day or multiple days trying to get their equipment or tools or whatever to work instead of doing the job. And one of the keys to Alyssa and I getting to where we are now has been having reliable tools. And it is a constant process maintaining everything. So the backhoe, we don't need it at this very second. It's not becoming a problem, but I don't want it to be a problem. So even if a neighbor just gave us a call in the next 20 minutes and said, hey, I need something moved, we could jump on and away we go. We've done that before. We had a friend call who said, hey, I'm stuck in the ditch. Can you come help me out? I'd be like, well, sorry, I, I, I'm behind on my maintenance and uh, it doesn't work, so call a tow truck, sorry? So thankfully, we've been able to keep up with everything and I'm not at all saying that I'm a maintenance guy. I am figuring all this stuff out. So anyway, that's kind of what I feel like maybe the deeper lesson of today is to maintain your equipment, and maybe you figure it out, maybe you don't, but try to always put it away in good working condition and hopefully in theory, when you need it, it'll be there for you.